Hello, and welcome, friends. We've got big news from PSA today. They've raised the bulk price declared value from $99 to $199. That means that more of your cards can get sent to their cryogenic stasis. No, honestly, that's great. That's exactly what we wanted. We wanted the ability to send more cards in. The time that it takes to get them back is just the time that it takes. You just kind of have to accept that. But I am surprised at how quickly they acted. So bravo to PSA for getting that done quickly. I believe that that's what everybody in the market wanted. And looking at the situation, even they saw the logical you know, conclusion to that, which was to raise declared value. That's great news. So beyond that, what do we have today? Today I'm gonna to help you guys understand how card uh, population plus the grade all affect the card price. So I'm gonna move you over here to the main screen and we're looking at Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray has a 1978 Topps rookie card. He was rookie of the year, eight times All-Star, three times Gold Glove, three times Silver Slugger, uh, and he also has the same jersey number as Larry Bird. A couple other notes, 13th all-time hits, 27th all-time in home runs, and 11th all-time in RBI. I was basically doing a little bit of research on, you know, undervalued uh, vintage baseball cards, 1970s rookies and whatnot, and I thought it was interesting to me that the cards could have been worth a bit more, but then you look at the pop counts, and you're like, well, I could, I mean, it, it makes sense versus the market demand, and I've had a lot of questions about how those things all interact together, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to share that with some of you guys who need or want to learn more about it. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the pop counts for that 1978 uh, Topps Eddie Murray rookie card. There is 8,943 that have been submitted in total, and there's only 18 PSA 10s. So obviously the premium price is going to be on that. We're going to check that out more a little bit later. Uh, next up is PSA 9, 650. And then when you get down to 7 and 8, you can see that the majority uh, of the submissions fall in this range. So you have 3,179 PSA 8s. So you can see how the PSA 8, even with that number, uh, you know, there's not a lot of demand for this card. The price is going to be probably around where it's at. If the demand suddenly changed, then that would suddenly be a low number, potentially. Uh, obviously, unless the demand went down. So if we go and we look at eBay, we can see what's available, what's up there, what do the prices look like right now. So I've filtered through uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10 for PSA. First thing we get is some dude that puts the PSA 8 plus on this raw card. So I just had to check it out, right? Because he says centered, not graded, PSA 8 plus. Yo, what is centered about this card? First of all, you got it in one of those dirty, nasty top loaders all shredded up. But the centering is clearly insanely off top to bottom. There's no way in hell that you could slide this by someone as a centered card. I think that this is misleading and this is definitely morally bankrupt uh, to the people that are out there that are looking for cards that might be newer to them, that don't have a good amount of experience as to what is centered, what is not. This, my f this is not centered, man. This ain't some Buddha shit. So this dude, bad on you, man. Bad on you. And another one. What do we have here? Well, that one's miscut. That makes sense. Then as we're scrolling down, we see a, a Compsy listing, and it's PSA 8, right? And you're like, damn, that's a dope deal because the cheapest PSA 8 otherwise is $123.99. So that $86.50 looks good. But then you see in that washed-out scan that it's an off-center. Now, this right here, I think, is acceptable from somebody who doesn't really know that much about the situation, uh, an, you know, an off-center versus a, a straight PSA 8, but Compsy, you ought to know better. In fact, your name is made up of C's and O's, so take the moment to put the O-C on the card, C. It's not that difficult. I mean, it's just, it, it's lazy. It's lazy. Anyway, you can get the cheapest one here for $123 for a PSA 8. If you scale, uh, scale all the way up and you try to find that PSA 9, it's going to be difficult to do. It is going to cost you $800, and then PWCC Vault is asking $2,000 or best offer. 
So what does all of this mean in relation to these numbers over here? Uh, what that means is that there's only 650. There's enough demand in the market that these people feel that, you know, seven or 800 will be uh, a, a saleable amount. And then the PSA 8, where everything gets glutted, that is where kind of the average dude is going to end up with one of these cards. And again, this is where the market is right now with the demand in the market. And that's how all of this works. Let's say uh, Gary V and LeBron James dress up as Cinderella and her sisters, and they go out on social media on parade, and they say, if you don't get an Eddie Murray rookie card and a PSA 8 at least, then you're a complete moron, and, and blah, 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 and they just start pumping out this, you need a PSA 8 Eddie Murray. How many people out there are going to react to that? Probably a lot, and suddenly 3,179 is just going to look like negative that amount. So instead of being around the 123 to 150 mark, maybe that shoots up to a six or seven hundred dollar card or let's say costco says all right you bring us a psa 8 eddie murray and you can have groceries free for the rest of your life suddenly everybody and their brother is going to go for that card and that's just a way for me to illustrate a change in demand right that's obviously these are just hypothetical scenarios which are only likely to happen 15% of the time. So, uh, but yeah, uh, reality works this way. Uh, if the demand goes up that high, then suddenly this a number of cards could look like a lot less or a lot more, you know, obviously depending on which way it goes. So when you see that price in the marketplace, you know, that is based on demand versus the pop count. So again, you see the 18 over here at the PSA 10. Who's out there that's going to be able to afford something like that? And how much of a premium will you get on that price? Well, I mean, that there's only 18 of them. So you're looking at guys that are in the baseball industry, like other Hall of Famers, other professionals, uh, maybe you know owners that are putting together sets or doing whatever. Whoever's, whoever is out there that has the amount of money that they would need for something like this, they're the ones that are going to be paying that premium, and they don't want the and they've got the money to pay for the 10. So if you go over here, uh, we can go see the results of the most recent sale on PSA's site. And you can see that a Gem Mint 10, the most recent sale was $18,830 versus $767 for the 9. Uh, and, and so the way that this stuff works when you guys are looking at ratios between 10, 9, 8, etc., uh, obviously you have to consider how often the card in a raw form is going to grade a 10. The more the card grades a 10, the less the ratio will be because it's easier to get 10s or 9s uh, in that sense. And you have to look at how much demand there is and how that will trickle over uh, to that 9 card. So in, in this world, there's a ton of desire for the Gem Mint 10 because it's extremely rare, so the premium price is paid. And then the 9, there's 600 and change of them, and there's not enough demand to drive that price up. Because if you look at normal ratios, you would say, well, if it's $1,000 in a 10, it's probably 350 in a 9. And that would be fair and accurate for a lot of cards in the mid-80s or whatever. But in this scenario, it's not the case because there's so many of these nines and there's so little desire uh, to pay more than this amount for them that they're not meeting that you know, criteria. If this was somebody also uh, that was more desired, obviously Eddie Murray was a beast. We just went through his stats and he very well could be uh, undervalued, but you would have to see that increase of demand to see the 7, uh, 150 or whatever hit like a 2000 mark. Because if you have a traditional ratio, it could be from 18 to like maybe three to 6,000 kind of depending. So, you know, that's, that's kind of how it all interworks together. How many are available at what grade? And then when the demand is there, is it demand from the average collector? Is it demand from like a premium buyer? What What's the average demand in the market? So there's a lot of things to look at. And of course, you can look at different players, not just Eddie Murray. There's that stupid Com C listing. Uh, you can check out other players and ratios, but that's kind of how it all weaves itself together. If you guys have any questions about this stuff, please let me know. I will do my best to answer them in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, and I hope you guys learned something today. Catch you on the flip side.